side and uh, maybe follow his grenades and then follow the T on the other end of them. Pistol time, north, starting, and uh, Cajun B has been dropped to Tech 9, which means he is the Raid Boss. <laughs> All right, well, we'll see how that Raid Boss turns out for him. It's good deal with that kit and smoke for the CT side, always very important. And we get a pretty big. Uh, well, it's essentially a play from Cloud9 where they're, you know, if there is a B rush, they can defend against it, but they can play retake on A. But the mix up is Stewie in the in Palace. That's a very unexpected position. And because now North are going through middle, taking over the A bomb site, he might become incredibly crucial. That's a great opener there coming in from Config as the bomb is now allowed to go down. And Stewie comes in from the back, but AZ's covering it. Two man T push through to CT as well. And there's currently a duel with one of the two large players for Cloud9. And he will get his head absolutely ripped off, Game of Thrones style. There goes Shrouds as well. Heads rolling all over the floor and the pistol has gone to north. Great start for north. And now we can see their approach to anti-ecos and anti-force buys, which is uh, more detailed than some others. For example, on Inferno, not quite Mirage, but on Inferno, we'll see them uh, approach Banana with double nades behind the wall, whereas most teams will focus on the sandbags and not consider that position. So north definitely dot the I's and cross the T's when it comes to these rounds. I have to definitely just Throw props in there for Cloud9 to adding that layer of detail to that last round, just having Stewie in the palace. Almost never see that. And they're quite unlucky that didn't pay off for them. But as we see North now progressing into the middle area to run this anti-force by, they'll be met with no resistance so far. It's in fact Stewie, as we can see on camera now, making an information play for the CT side. Cloud9 will have info that no one is towards T Pit at the moment, but Stewie perhaps is not long for this well as AZ is creeping in. But Stewie's got a very good position here, and he's played this perfectly, but he just has to finish the frag. Oh, ah! no, runs out of bullets. You hate to see that. Oh. Not, ev not every oh. analyst is uh, a fan of mid position on a round like this because you're exposed to so many different positions, and it could all turn into disaster for you. Almost two plays lost for Norse, in fact, but AZ will survive with 8 HP for the time being. Still three Cloud9 players alive, North without possession of either site. However, they've made the right decision in that Shroud is the only person towards A, uh, B rather. Automatic though, not sure if he's going towards mid or B, but for now Shroud's alone. It's going to be a tough spot to hold. Let's see if he can do it. Shroud, oh, that's a good start there. The weekend AZ finished off by the P250 of Shroud, but he will fall. Leaving automatic and nothing to the task. A quick crack there from automatic, increasing the damage done. Nothing, maybe with another one. Indeed, the bomb down. 20 seconds to go for the plants. Now, nothing can actually do this one. Magisk is fairly healthy. Here comes nothing around the corner. Magisk looking for it, though. And that will be the rounds. A very expensive round for for the uh, north side. And imagine, just imagine had Stewie made the kill by T-Spawn, T how that would have changed around as well. That was very winnable and very well played by Cloud9. This was very unfortunate for, for Stewie. If he just took a slight second more, put his crosshair on the head, but I think he might have been afraid of... Um, the avatar facing him. And sometimes, you know, the avatar might be looking in one direction, but they, they can see you already, so can't be too careful with that. Cloud9 with the USP stack into the B bomb site. And MSL, he's going for uh, a fact finding mission. He's going hiking. He's a rambling hiker, that. And uh, he may be trespassing on private land because the CTs have been forced to defend. However, the rest of his team will move into the A site and he will run distraction. Yeah, that was that was perfect, wasn't it? Just got all the information straight away. Not for like, yep, this is an easy one. Just uh, go all the way into A. We know there's nobody, pretty much nobody going to be present there and all the kills will be picked up. But we can't forget that previous round from Cloud9 where they were able to get four kills. So they did really make that force by worth it as far as you know, speaking about economy pressure goes. And now we're going to see North in a situation where they're not as cozy as they may or would have liked to have been. But the issue for Cloud9 is whether or not they can actually put the pressure on the wounds here and take this round away from North. Skadoodle, Skadoodle will have an AWP, but he doesn't have any Kevlar with that. Yeah, that's an interesting start to the CT half. And that may stop him from going towards the middle position because he would be subject to grenades. He will start on a ramp. In the meantime, AZ is going to be looking for a fast play into Connector. Almost a uh, classic phase style. Two man push coming in. Looking the wrong way. Spotted by nothing. As that smoke goes down, the fast play completely failed. The bomb has been isolated. Automatic with the continuation of spray won't be enough, though. Still Mac 10s in play for the time being. 
but rifles will be collected. And we got Skadoodle there watching like a hawk with that AWP over by the A bomb sites. And Cajun B, he won't find himself an entry there. He's going to try his luck elsewhere as he makes his way towards the B apartments and sees what he can find. It's quite the run, and he does have plenty of time here to really work this. And this may be one of the more unexpected angles for Cloud9 as they do have possession of the bomb, and that does give them some le level of expectation as to how KGB might want to attack the round. But the question is, did he give away a sound cue there that was audible for Shroud? It may have been the case because I think some positions were shifted indeed. We've got nothing now. Looking for that push through the vents. So Cajun B, surely there's no way he can do this now. They know where he's coming from, and there it is. So they set it up, and they knocked it down. Good round from Cloud9. Unbeknownst to Cajun B, uh, Shroud was in ladder room and heard him running through apartments before he even got to the site, so the game was given away. Now, that was a, uh, a failed round from North, but it was a very interesting one. You have to consider how sharp you have to be on timing to rush connector and have those grenades go down into jungle um, just in time. So that was... Really sharp stuff, definitely something to look at in a replay. Doesn't work for North on this occasion, trying to overwhelm Cloud9 before they know what hit them. And that may be a sign of things to come from North. We were back on the bike. Skadoodle now has some clothing with his AWP. He's no longer naked. MSL and KGB moving top mid. Config maybe flashed into connector. Fairly standard stuff for the North side if that happens. Just a dry peek from him, actually. So indeed some changes. You see Automatic moving around in the ladder room looking for a peek, but the smoke will deny him. So these counter smokes from the CTs will slow things down. So that was very scary there for nothing. Down to 13 health. Kara 3 bullet through the smoke from Config. And again, North, they have to wait out these grenades somewhat. And it looks like Cloudline haven't given away middle just yet. Yeah, of course, they, they have, well, they've given up the middle itself, but Connector is definitely uh, watched over by Cloud9 at the moment. They've got a passive position by Stewie, sort of having to watch two spots, as you can see here. Worried that there could be someone boosting through the smoke, which his teammate uh, short could not cover. Automatic is still smoked off. This is a great positioning here from North, ready to go for the split onto the A bomb site. It's really going to be down to nothing as well. 13 HP on the shadow position and Skadoodle here for the initial defense. And it's going well. They're getting picked off like a scab on a child's knee by the CTs. Five players still remain alive for Cloud9. This is a huge round for them in the early stages of Mirage. Perfect round from Cloud9. Colgate smiles all over. Two to three for North, who are going to be in eco territory at this point. Config somehow has got 3,900, but apart from that, it's two to two and a half K for the Danish side. And in talking about the artistry to expect perhaps from North on building that mid control into into a, a, a situation where you've got an advantage on you know, whether you're going for a split or you can get some positioning where you can leave a lurker somewhat to, to do a lot of damage to the CTs and then you force rotation, then he gets the kills. Situations like this. So far, Cloud9 are playing very well against that. Of, of course, we saw them last round and now we have an eco situation for North, which of course, Cloud9 should be enjoying. There's a, an opener there from Skadoodle. The plan attempt is made, and it is successful. Not sure how Matrix was able to get that one, but looks like the CTs will be in for the cleanup, and it will be very brief. Yeah, it was easy to get the bomb down there. Spinning like a spinning top, which was quite hilarious. Trying to avoid the headshot and make his hitbox as random as possible. It's through successful, so that bonus money is in, but we are all tied up 3-3. Three to three. Hashtag Palm Tree Boys. How many of you knew that there were cannons in CT Spawn of Mirage? Look at this. Spinning. I can't. I was going for a song there, but I don't actually have a song that starts spinning down. So well, you spin me right round? Pretty much. You spin me. Yeah, yeah we won't, we won't go. go there, but Marvelous. everyone knows it. Yeah, let's leave it alone. One up. Magix has gone for the Krieg, Dan. You're a fan of this. The Krieg is here. 100% armor penetration when you really need to break through them walls. Yep, and of course, the it's a very accurate weapon. Very accurate weapon. Magic's one of the few players still trying to really make this work. It is a bit more expensive than the AK, but we'll have to hold that for Skadoodle now. In the forward position, 
will receive a rush, takes down the first player. No scope missed on the airborne Cajun B. Stewie quick though, able to take down the player, trying to go for the bomb plant. Not gonna be successful this time. Good positioning here, held by Stewie Ford. He needs to buy the space for his teammates. Even gets the kill with the assist there from nothing on the incendiary. And just like that, Cloud9 able to stop the rush. Yeah, they were surrounded like a 90s action hero movie were North. MSL caught without a gun in his hand, just forced to face the firing squad. Nothing he could do at that point. So another failed mission for the North side, who are heading towards maximum loss bonus after this eco round. So it will be uh, essentially the buy between the buys already. Kevlar Tech 9 for most of the squad. So let's see what they have to bring to this round. Magix is uh, top mid, the rest of them in B apartments where Strad is currently on his own. So there's a, there's a window of opportunity, but it may soon close as automatic heads back towards B. So seems Cloud9 expected a rush towards A, but they were wrong. And Shroud looking to go juggernaut mode. Immovable perhaps, but no, he is eventually taken down after two kills. However, his job likely done here as his teammate automatic is fast into the B-bomb site and cleaning things up without too much of a hassle. Just nothing left here to get the final frag. Oh, perhaps not. Magis able to steal that one away. And he'll take the AK as well. So just looking to do some damage here. And that's a, I mean, generally speaking, I've been impressed by how decisive Cloud9 have looked so far in the opening here. Yeah, Magix has nothing to lose at this point. He doesn't need to save because they're going to have loads of money next round regardless. So he can try to essentially win the round. He's got a minute on the clock, but all that time has been taken away. His watch has been crushed. It's been drowned. Stewie 2 is having none, no more of that nonsense. Five to three for Cloud9 now. That's five rounds in a row since the pistol and the associated rounds, if you will, the force by the eco. Nothing but success coming the way of Cloud9. He wouldn't have it any other way. Shroud eventually taken down there. Config, okay, I've got an AK as well. Yeah, they're looking really good at the moment. I mean, it's just, it looks like smooth sailing. And I don't know if you're on the same page with me, but I feel as though North have to have a great T side if they want to win this game of Mirage. I don't think, I mean, it's one of their strengths, so why the hell not? But they've struggled so far. The connector smoke finally comes down. I think the lower one might be the CT one, I'm not sure, but that's commonly a response from the CTs to make life difficult. Two players in for North, we've got one lurker in Cajun B, and it's a team kill, but what does it mean? It's a four on four. How much can Cloud9 read into this? Trying to kill the time, trying to ruin the timing. Great team flash, but he doesn't see anything. He does not see the players, but Blind's got config. Oh, he's lost, he's taken down with the bomb, no less. Stewie unable to defend from ladder room, but the problem is with North. Look at this pace from North. All these rounds just going really fast against Cloud9, a team that really works very well at a fast pace. That's where they, too, find their comforts. As Magic tries to re-control Connector, able to go in front of the smoke just before it blooms. That is perfect, as that bomb is very close to being picked up now. And indeed, it is collected here for North. And they've got 45 seconds, which is plenty of time to construct this attack onto the A site. But with nothing creeping around the CT vents, this could be problematic as North have only three players. It's difficult to watch everything, and indeed, nothing finds the perfect angle there to catch AZ as he progresses forwards. That creates additional worry there for Magix, who's carrying the bomb, but now time is starting to run low, and Shroud, still undiscovered on the bomb site, is ready to cause all kinds of problems. And here he comes. Easy takedown onto Magix. No bomb plant for you, and nothing will swoop in for the help as well. Great presence of mind from Shroud to go for the uh, preemptive burst towards Palace, and he was right, but nobody was there. They couldn't move as fast as he could. So great play from Cloud9. Shroud just waiting and crushing that round for North. And again, this is six rounds in a row. If we ignore the pistol, this is basically a 6-0. This is not good territory for North. I mean, they've had again, they've had some good ideas, but I don't know how close they have come to converting those ideas in any of these rounds. Pistols again. Butcher by five deagles looking for meat shots on these Cloud9 players. And this time the focus will be on the A bomb site. Stewie is in an extremely forward position. Skadoodle can run distractions from the long range, but how many kills can he get from here? There's one, but the trade is immediate. Nothing now has to step up to the plates. He's done a decent job here so far. Still, Cloudline have an AWP. 
in Scudido by the toll booth, ready and waiting for the opportunity to strike. And North are having problems at the moment getting onto the bomb site with these pistols of theirs, without any further utility to aid them in the push. And with the bomb down on the side as it is, things get now increasingly difficult. Oh, the timing! Automatic goes down, and maybe there's a chance after all. Those puncturing sounds. Three on three. No rifles collected by these players. The shadow. Does he realize what's going on? Nothing. Does he see the shadow? Did he see it at all? Either way, he's got himself two headshots. And the third player finally materializes, but gets uh, hit by the phaser straight away. I don't think he noticed the shadow there. Or, or maybe he did and took a read that he could look the other way. Seven, two, three. Let me know your thoughts. Do you think nothing saw the shadow? <laughs> saw he was on the fence and could look the other way because he knew where the player was? Or did he have no idea? I think he... I, I think that he's, he noticed the shadow, but he thought that the player was below instead of on the fence. Uh, so that's what I think. But I think you're insane. <laughs> I, maybe we can, we can ask him later and find out. Uh, I'm sure. But I, think, I think he probably realized he was... I think he saw, he saw the shadow. Yeah, he's, uh, it's, it's actually awesome because nothing... I mean, so many players from Cloud9 have at some point, of course, as many professional players have in some points of, the, of their career... Uh, been under a lot of criticism, but nothing was one of the uh, players to you know come back into his own um, in the last uh, six months or so, bringing these great performances. Automatic and Stewie, of course, they joined the team. They were performing amazingly, and now with Shroud and Skadoodle playing as solidly as they have been, and so far today uh, in this match, just although it's only only ten rounds in, it's uh, looking pretty good right now for Cloudline. Seven to three is the score for them. Nothing is eighteen for four at Ooh. the moment. So he is all Beast. over the place. He is in that ass. I would normally say ass, actually. I do apologize for my uh, my UK brethren. He's in the ass. <laughs> Doesn't quite have the, have the same it's, ring to it's it. It's the ass he is in, not the ass. Enough about that. <laughs> Three players in the middle area for the Seaside Automatic moving into the ladder room once again. Now, we've got a potential duel later on between, between Magix and uh, Stewie in the apartment. But for now, we've got the, the CTs repositioning and North making their way through. Automatic picked off, looking around the smoke. Speaking of which, I thought nothing might have it, but he doesn't. Skadiddle left as the last man on the A bomb site. Did he see the player on the stairs? He did. MSL has no idea that he's exposed, but AZ will finally trade. And when Skadiddle's firing off like that, you almost expect him to just knock all the pins down. However, a three versus two North in a late round situation where they have the advantage. We haven't seen this too commonly on their first half just yet, but can they close this advantage down into a victory? Facing Stewie there, the double face into short. That's going to be good. Now Shroud left in a clutch situation. Will he be visiting the top of Reddit today? Is the question now as the incendiaries are thrown. The bomb is planted on the A bomb site. Shroud awaiting patiently for the first opportunity. Bit of info there for him. Seeing those bullets graze off those barrels. As he makes his way forwards, there's the first engagement. But Config will win it. And a round for North. Round number four, in fact. And as you said, James, you know, they won the North did win the pistols. So this is really the first actual success they've had in the buy versus buy round. Yeah, it's their first buy round win. Um, and the problem is at this point, Cloud9 have three players who started this round on more than $11,000. That said, money very quickly disappears when you're on the CT side. So um, if North can string some rounds together, well, I mean, it's round 12. They need to string all the rounds together if they can. AWPs finally on both sides. Cajun B may end up dueling with Skadoodle. Currently around Connector. And he will tag MSL, take some damage himself. I don't know how many plays he saw top mid, but it's very early days in this round, so C9 won't be going crazy of this information. Going back to the well now, it's just Doodle and Cajun B caught in isolation. So confident, so ready to be anywhere. Skadoodle just staying out there in middle. Playing off the smoke. Picks up that opener. Now North need to respond. They've gained connector control. Connector control is very important. You can play off of it in a variety of ways. Either leave it, leave a player there as a lurker, or perhaps you can use it as a position to split onto the A bomb site with. You can see at the moment North still have their players spread out across the map. I believe, you know, waiting potentially for any sort of information play that could have come in the B apartments, but Cloud9 have been quite passive there. And it's going to be up to North now to make the play. And there's one from Config, but there's the return. And still, where does this leave North? 40 seconds remain. AZ in the site on his own. He needs some help. 
He's taking damage. He's down to 10 HP. Skadoodle still holding lines, but he's been naded into oblivion. Nothing's gone as well. Two versus three, but two of these three players from North are in the red. How can they try and plant the bomb? They've smoked jungle, and they're going to try and plant on triple, but MSL, he's so close to dying, but he's still alive. He makes the hero play, and it's Magic versus two. Only for a split second, though. Full health, but that won't matter. Shroud to take him down, and the worst has happened for North. They've won one round after losing seven and lost the next round immediately. Very quick trio frags from Shroud there, and... Um, nothing's still sitting at 18 kills. I think it was, it was Stewie you said to watch. He's on four kills, James. What if what if you just want to see the action, man? I know he's just standing in shadow. Well, they've <laughs> as long as you've got enough buttons on your keyboard, you can see all the other players it's as true. well. Very true. And here is the lovely 3K from Shroud. Very quick, just the snaps that precision and speed from Shroud is is becoming incredibly deadly. Speaking of uh, very quick, one thing we won't see um, is when Skadoodle got that kill through Connector, the way he moved through A to escape and reposition, checking Palace, checking Ramp, very, very careful awareness of the entire map, and that's really important to have in an AWPA. So definitely something to learn by looking at Skadoodle on this map as well. So right now North, once again, just putting that pressure on middle, trying to take it over, using the use of utility. There were seven smokes on the map. 10 seconds ago. <laughs> and look where it's positioned north now. Looking to go for a split onto the B bomb site using short and the B apartments. And they have a lurker towards connector as well. The first time they've really run this strategy. Let's see if it works out for them. In they go and the entry will come. But still, Stewie lurks. He could wait for a plant, try to exploit as many players as possible, but they've gone for the short plant instead, and that has maybe saved them. And look at that, he's gone down! Couldn't have expected that. Skadoodle trying to do what he can, making his way into the site, spotting one, but not fast enough. The AK superior to the AWP in this round. North with a strong answer to Cloud9, making life very expensive for the North Americans. Two rounds remain. And it's really cool to see that North aren't deterred from running a very quick pace, because they weren't really finding a lot of success in playing very fast in some of the previous rounds, but obviously they mixed up their approach. They went for the, sp they took middle like they normally do. They went for the split this time onto the B bomb site, and they just hit those entry frags, showing that they still have the confidence that they can you know, make the shots that they, you know, that they need to make to make these plays work, and that Cloud9 are indeed, well, they bleed. They can bleed. They can be shot. They can bleed like anyone else. And here it comes, another fast play from North. So now nothing, the top fragger has a 5-7. Uh, However, he... Is it? This is weird, but we had enough time to talk about it. Oh my god, he's got two kills, but we'll come back to this a bit later on. He's still alive, he's got a smoke, he's buying time. The Molotov won't uh, do anything. His teammate got taken down, but he's still there with a 5-7. And now it's Shroud, alone versus three. Behind the smoke, there are players in connector, forced through the flashbangs. He'll hit MSR, so he's got himself a warning. And his position gives him a reasonable chance for a one versus one by this wall if he just stays there, waiting patiently for the smoke to go. MSR, though, repositioning, escaping by chance, just in time. So we'll see what he chooses to do. So I was going to say nothing's a top frag, and he's just got a 5-7. He actually swapped places with Stewie in that situation, but why not just swap the gun and, and have them play their normal positions? I don't know how much that might affect things there, but... I mean, if he, if nothing has, he's got 13 rounds of experience with what North are trying to do, and uh, maybe their tendencies around. So, so th I think there's an argument to be made there. Not saying either one is right or wrong, but it's an interesting scenario. Also, one thing to note is that North's draft book, despite being somewhat unsuccessful so far in this uh, in this half, seems to be quite deep on the C side. They're oh putting yeah. out a lot of different strategies. And and again, a lot of them have just been fast strategies too. We can see it, and, and that's another situation where they just they go super fast. At last, the previous round, they went super fast to B. This time, they went super fast towards A. And it again, it's just so good because one of the reasons why they're losing a lot of the earlier buy rounds, where they, they took a s more s slow approach using map control and so on, is because they were losing some of the aim battles uh, from Cloud9, but here they're showing, you know what, we can go fast, we can match you for firepower. So great statement from North here, they picked up their sixth round now, and Cloud9, they're starting to lose the grip uh, on their, in fact, their, their momentum's lost now, and their weaponry is a result of that. They are down to UMP and CZs and so on, it's not a good look here for Cloud9 now. Stewie, Automatic, Skadoodle, and nothing all on the A site, Stewie Automatic and Skadoodle, three of those four players, very uh, close towards Palace, towards Ramp, nothing playing his usual position. North, they know that there are shortcomings in Cloud9's buy, 
they know that aggression is a reasonable expectation so they will change the pace they'll take a slow approach but the surprises may be nasty we've got cz in play dan we have cz in play we do indeed and you never know in <laughs> counter-strike global offensive what can happen when these pistols are in play North going for a split onto the A side. That's where the stack is. There's the first kill from Stewie. Redemption perhaps for an earlier missed fragging situation with that CZ. And he's going to control the pit position. He's picked himself up a weapon. And now North has some decisions to make. They've left themselves with 40 seconds to go. And that sort of commits them into going for this A play where all the CTs are just waiting for them. This feels like the OD Avalanche when the uh, MG42s are out. I smell a massacre on the way, Dan. Can North get their seventh round? So far, so good, but it's very tentative. AZ with two kills, Cajun B with a, a very nice one around that smoke on the stairs, but they still need to plant the bomb, and two CTs are alive. Shroud's rotating towards CT. Stewie's almost got two kills, but he runs out of bullets. But Shroud, he's in position, 10 seconds. If they don't plant for triple, they are surely in trouble. Oh, no, they've gone the wrong way, and the burst is there, but the instant trade from Cajun B, the hero play, gets a seventh round on the board for North. How close was that one? Oh, man, it was painfully close. <laughs> But North have managed to actually collect a bunch of rounds here towards the end of this first half to make it look very respectable. Very, I mean, it can't get more even than this. I mean, eight rounds there for Cloud9, seven rounds for North at the end of the first half. And if you look at the way things went after that pistol victory from North, you wouldn't have expected this kind of scoreline. It really did feel like North were running into a brick wall for quite some time there. But now, we, you know, everything changes. Cloud9, now they get to play the aggressive side. And for me, you know, I, I was expecting p to see potentially their best performance on this side. And one thing that has impressed me from Skadoo, I know we talked about him a lot, is how he has made the AWP work on the T side of this map. Because it's not it's not the easiest thing in the world. Skadoodle and nothing will be the grenade men for the T side. Skadoodle with the uh, Molotov, which can have some post-plant use if you keep someone in the high ground towards, well, in the apartments. Because depending on where you plant it default, or if you plant it for short, you can stop diffusers coming in from the uh, apartment position without facing but you pretty much never see that situation only on train in fact so we'll see what they do the late flashbangs coming in as they jump out of the window the timing is important there but Magix he is keeping it quiet that's going to yield him three kills looking for the fourth one on nothing being very very patient there and he will get the fourth kill he's got no uh, no pistols left no bullets no left, bullets <laughs> no bullets almost had grenades i know i was, I was uh, enjoying that but no. anyway <laughs> fumble there <laughs> it's a great 4k to kick things off that position has paid dividends for both teams but the pistol very important early on magic is like please come in please come in please come in your tickets have been revoked it's actually incredible how often this we you see highlights from this position in the pistol round obviously it's not as typical as when you would see the players actually exit from position like outside the balcony where he st was standing but yeah, really good damage from Magis. Great performance. And but they have to deal with the force buy. That's uh, oh sorry, actually, actually a half buy. So he's or is it a full? It's a force oh, buy. Oh no, sorry, mate. it's force buy. There it is. Sorry, couldn't see the armors. I am um, in need of some some glasses, perhaps. But we'll see whether or not Clanley can make this investment work for themselves. Not a lot of utility for North, but that could work out quite well if they can keep Clanley at distance. But interestingly, all th like three players have gone through to underpass. But they've left the bomb in apartments, which Skadoodle is going back for. But Shroud's lurking outside eight. So I'm not quite sure what the plan is from Cloud9, but maybe the mysterious plan will be revealed soon enough. But it's an interesting place to leave the bomb because Skadoodle's gone from mid into apartments and then come back out again. Boost from uh, the T's, but they've been spotted. They know what's up. Config will be heard on the ladder and the T's will make their escape. So the bomb has gone from being left in apartments to rotated back towards A. So perhaps there was some mid-round discussion as to what the plan was. Now we've got automatic in the connected area and two on the ramp. Stroud taken down, but it's Skadoodle carrying the all-important bomb. And there it goes. And that was really nice there from Cajun. I think it's just some pre-fire, in fact, just around the angle. And easy frag there in mid for config. So this is all but falling apart here for Cloud9. Automatic would really love to get some damage in here. He needs a frag or two at the very least, but will be denied by a very clean performance from North. Well done to them, as now they'll be experiencing, they'll be reaping some of the rewards as they will now be up against Glocks and they can further build their bank. 5,263 souvenirs dropped. 69, 76, 83. I was just looking oh at that God. as well. It's nice, isn't it? Nice. Yeah, they've updated it from last time. Yeah. It's nice.
I like that's it. part of the PGL overlay, because the in-game one is the same. Impressive. North with a one-round lead, Cloud9 on the Glock train. The Glock train has got plastic wheels. They are worn. They're not even straight. They need truing, to say the least. Life is not good if you're on a Glock train. MSL and Cajun B will be ready to receive these players, and headshots will be deployed. Black, black, black. There it goes. More USP kills. A lovely thud to finish off the 10th round for North. Yeah, and they're making this very, very fast, both of these teams, because of the manner of... Obviously, that's a, just a Glock rush, but just generally, both teams seemingly want to play it pretty fast, and that's always exciting to watch. I think Mirage is a, obviously a great map for that sort of style. And I'm very curious to see what the approach for Cloud9 will be, generally speaking, and how perhaps it may have changed since they had uh, some of the results that they've been having recently and how things have changed, how the confidence levels have changed in the team as well. Uh, perhaps they've prepared some new stuff here. I am assuming this is a technical timeout, and there it is, technical pause. Boom. You can see the... Um, I forgot what those screens are called behind them, the command center or something that has all the... The watchtower. The watchtower, there the we go. Watch Thank you. The watchtower, which has... I was marveling at those earlier. The watchtower, which has all the screens on. Yeah, that's very cool. He looks at it with perfect timing. Outstanding stuff. Interestingly, some of the Cloud9 players um, are wireless mouse fans. I don't know if they use yeah. them. I, th I think at least two of the players are using wireless mice or use wireless mice, but I maybe Automatic is one of them. It's really it's crazy. Days was, uh, was going on about that, saying like it's, he was the biggest skeptic and he was converted. It's, it's uh, technology. Yeah. It's pretty cool, man. Some of those uh, actually have less latency than some wired mice. Well, that's that's the thing that will, would blow your mind, isn't it? It kind of feels like it would be an in, uh, counterintuitive in that sense, yeah, but obviously... But I, I imagine it's so minimal that it doesn't matter as yeah. far as humans are concerned. Same thing with uh, monitors. I mean, CRTs are in a, the cathode ray tube technology. That's pretty much instantaneous as far as I understand. And TFTs, you know, LCDs, whatever, there's, there's latency there on all the monitors we use, but people that you don't really notice it. It's, it's so small these yeah, days. It's so, so marginal, it's, uh, it is not relevant for the most part. Nice adjustable stands there. So none, none of these people are paying me, by the way. But I, they should definitely well, be. Well, we're just talking about the technology, I'm James. Awesome, we're, not, yeah. we're, not, we're not, you know. I know, but I mean, th they should pay us. Because <laughs> then, then we would have money then. There we go. Basically. All right. So, Sounds good. this will be Sign resuming me up. soon. I like these little uh, cameras and their clamps. That's pretty cool. You a fan of clamps? I'm a fan of clamps, yeah. G clamps are good. I think the only clamp I can think of is a G clamp. But we're not going to have a clamp discussion, Dan, because we're not that boring. I feel we, like we it's, could it's, do it's one of the we could. We are more than capable of clamp discussion. I know, I right. But we will not engage. It's one of the things that we haven't really discussed. Clamps. Out of all the weird things, you know, we have discussed in the past, clamps have never yeah. really come up for some reason. Over the I don't years, know we have never discussed clamps. Yeah. If you're a, if you're a, you know, if you've got something to say about clamps, then you could, you're welcome to tweet me. There might be some enthusiasts out there, you know. It's if you're a clamp enthusiast, then tweet Dan. But if you're just a general person who has something to say about clamps, then tweet me. I think that's the the the, uh, the way of <laughs> the way that it should be. <laughs> Marvellous. So, 10 to 8. Not much to read into this just yet. I mean, well, do you think that Cloud9's aggression will be too difficult for North to deal with? Or are we underestimating North by saying that? Well, it's interesting too because I think uh, so far, Stewie's had a frustrating game, I think. I think he's uh, you know been playing... He's been playing well, but you know, some of these, he's had some of these spots where you would expect him, he would expect himself to get, you know, the, you know, kills. You know, we had very early on <coughs> the uh, force buy round where he crept into uh, T spawn was unable to um, actually, or rather, uh, yeah, get the kill there on the the player, the T side player there to with the CZ. Why is everyone? Everyone in Counter Strike has a ginger beard. Have you noticed that? Like even Anders's beard is ginger. I never noticed that until like a week ago. I was like, well, everyone's ginger uh, on the beard, <laughs> but not necessarily at, like right. elsewhere. Like, there's just two, there's a distinct two different colors there on top of his head and the bottom of his head. I like how this confounds you. Yeah, it's someone telling me, I need to know about the science of this. Um, but yeah, to answer your, <coughs> your question, <laughs> you like ask me a question and you like you just start talking about something else. <laughs> when I was, I was I'm sorry, it. but I just had to say that right there. You need to get, get on the, uh, the observations about the beard. Beard science. Beard science. 
Well, I, th I think uh, it's interesting with Cloud9 because normally what I would expect would expect them to do would be to test their opponents in so far as is, you know how they would respond to their aggression. Like if they just run something simple, even you know the, even like a set piece of smokes into the A site, you know how well does that opponent react to that? How well are they going to hit their entry frags and so on and so forth? Does that kind of aggressive stuff is what I would like to see out of Cloud9 just because I think they do it well and they're a team that that's uh, play that situation once you've taken the site very, very well. As far as, you know, everybody knowing exactly where they have to go, who has to cover what, they're a team that does that well. So it is a strength of theirs. So I would expect to see that. But I think North are more than capable of, of uh, dealing with pretty much anything. I think, you know, skill-wise, they can handle it. They, they obviously understand rotations and strategies, and they, they're a team that will have done their homework. And Cloud9 have been very visible at the top level lately, so this should be very interesting. Yeah, I think, I mean, from what we've seen on the, the T side, in terms of ideas from North, it looks like they are very prepared for this major. The unpause has finally come in. We're about to get back into the game. Cloud9 proceeding on the T side. Limited grenade, but they've got five AKs, and we know what they can do with those. North are continuing as they were, if you will. MSL with the UMP. He's got $7,600 in the hole. So we'll see uh, how that plays a part in things later on. Cloud9 taking their initial positioning. Shroud will make his way into the palace area. Automatic will go towards top mid. Almost going in front of the boxes there. That would not have been good. Stewie and nothing in apartments. But the bomb is rotating towards A. Two lurkers towards A. Pretty much guarantees an A play unless something goes terribly wrong. Yeah, and that's interesting actually because I wonder if Automatic w was wanting to use that smoke for uh, to be a you know someone that smokes jungle um, later on because you can obviously get the smokes in from that position. So we'll, we'll see how impactful him having to force that use of smoke is going to be in the in the A play that is to come in this round as you highlighted. Two players from Connector. Uh, there's a very good pickup there from Stewie into the short position. There's a challenge from AZ. Not going his way, though, is now Cloud9 have a very good situation here. Five versus three with a minute left. This is a spot that a team of the caliber of Cloud9, they shouldn't... Th there's almost, you know, there's a very low chance that they should throw around away like this. But the bomb is rotating away from ramp. I don't know if they have a read on MS on MSL being on the ramp, because that's where he is, or if they're trying to play against the rotation of the CTs, but the CTs have rotated straight back to B. So maybe MSL had an audio cue there, so this is gonna get really weird. 35 seconds left. Cloud9 are in a position to split the A site from three places with nothing on a potential flank, but they're running out of time to do so. They need this to be almost perfect. Yeah, Config is in a great position to make the hero play here. Tech 9 and an AWP. There's one spot. Falls off the balcony now into a more passive position. Cajun B with enough time to get into position as well. In comes Stewie though. That's a very fast shot from Config to shut him down. But he's got so much more work to do. And it's nothing to take him out. Cloud9 win the round with very, very little time left in that round. And I was a bit worried there that Config would just go off and just shut, shut him down. Yeah, that was a really interesting situation. Kind of reminds me of uh, Death Note where both... Both people <laughs> think that they got, yep, they've got the upper hand and are constantly outsmarting each other. And it ends up that Shroud cuts off MSL on the rotation. And then you've got the jewels on the B-bomb site, which are ultimately won. We saw Magic's Boy moving around, trying to see what was going on in Connector. And he found out. Got shot in the face. The good timing for him. Manages to get the smoke off and shoot the player in the face. So we have a drop which has not been detected by Cloud9, a player in the underpass. He may come into play later on. Nothing doing just yet. Yeah, Cloud9 playing a slow couple rounds. And North, you know, they are in a position where taking aggression could be just what the doctor ordered. How cognizant will they be, though, Cloud9, to try to anticipate stuff like this? Config could have the perfect timing on a peak, but it looks like he may have been spotted indeed. I think Stewie saw a pixel there. Perhaps the shoulder was exposed. What on earth is that? Able to turn around and take Stewie out. Again, another frustrating situation there for Stewie, but he still has four teammates there alive and kicking, ready to go into the B-bomb sites. Who doesn't have four teammates around him? Here's Magic Boy at the moment, alone on the B-bomb site. And now that's the open for business, but Cloud9, Cloud9 don't know that just yet. It'll take them a while to check all the usual corners. The bomb being thrown out of apartment, someone is staying on the high ground. That's very important post-plant. Definitely something to think about to stop the flanks. Automatic stare as well. Not much North can do, and they will be going for the save. Congregating in the A sites. And uh, this is around where, where they don't have the money in the hole. So these players will need to drop for their team. And there is a big difference in having three players or two players surviving 
in rounds such as this. Cloud9 tied the score, 10 to 10. This is getting pretty tight between these two teams. It does feel right now that Cloud9 have found their groove a little bit into the T side with these buy rounds. So who are your, who are your uh, players of choice to watch on GoTV in this half -back? Um, as I said previously, I think Skadoodle is, is definitely, if, you, if you're someone that likes to pick up the Yorp on T side of Mirage, I think he's one of the better players in consistently creating opportunities and getting action because it, sometimes it can feel as though you just get shut down by smokes, uh, you know, superior angles by the CTs, and, it, and life can be difficult, but he's consistently able to make it work. So he's definitely a player for me and Stewie, of course, as well is the just the playmaker for the team despite having a frustrating game so far in a few spots but a bit of fast timing from automatic potentially here just uh, straight towards the pit position making sure he's safe against some of the pre-nades thrown by the cts to counter rush timings now he'll creep his way up a bit further there is cloud nine are oh, just setting themselves up in a similar way to some of the previous rounds got to be careful about that one we've seen that before yeah, and it's not safe for CTs to stand by the barrel anymore either because you can shoot through the lip of the wall straight into somebody's head. We've seen that recently. I think at the offline qualifier we saw that. Yep. So uh, that said, Magic's Boy has gone straight back into apartments after smoking it. Cloud9 may move toward the middle area. Shroud still lurking towards A. But uh, I think we've got smoke towards mid to allow Stewie to move towards the boxes. But... One minute on the clock, and it seems it might be a B split attempt. I like this play here from North Bay. And also from Cloud9, North need to take some slight risks here. They don't have great weaponry. They've got the UMPs. And Cloud9 also anticipating aggression. They've slowed the round down dramatically, and they're going to go for a quick play onto the B1 site. Now at this point, a set piece with smokes, but Magis is in such a forward position that he might be able to get a, uh, two quick kills here as they run in. There's number one. Magis looking for more there. Perfect timing on the flashbangs there from the CTs. This Magis has to pull back, has to pull the pistol out. It's just not good enough. And there's Config now just sitting on the bomb site, waiting for the opportunity as Cloud9 desperately make their way in. Desperate is the operating word right there as Config annihilates the offense. Oh dear, Cloud9, it's all falling apart. The garden hose deployed. Pesticides for all. Pesticides by the bucket load. And the bucket is very full indeed. MSL second peak. Not good enough to take Skadoodle down. Looks like he might survive, although Config is on the flank from top mid. Skadoodle looking sharp today, but the round is with North. They take the lead once more. We'll see what this does to the money of Cloud9, who failed the plant. And uh, it's they can buy for sure. They're mostly uh, above $4,000, so I'm sure the buy will come back in. But that was a great play by the CTs, patiently waiting. You don't need to take every fight that is potentially offered, but just wait to have a more critical impact. Wait for that plant to come in. Two-man spray down. Lovely stuff from the CTs. Oh, yeah, and it's, it's, it's one of those spots where there's the chaos is high and these positions can go unknown, but they're going to have to hold that for Config wants to create more chaos series. Going for that aggression there on the side of the smoke on short. What will he find is the question with that FAMAS of his. This is a very scary place to be in. A bit too many flashbangs there for him. He's going to fall back. We haven't picked a player to watch on GoTV for the CT side. And Config seems to be up to some shenanigans at the moment. So I'm going to select him. For those of you on GoTV, we recommend watching Config on the CT side. Dan gave you his thoughts for the T side. T side, which currently has possession of the middle area. Shroud lurking towards A, nothing lurking towards B. Bomb top mid, so not too much info as to where Cloud9 might be headed. But look at uh, the position there from Stewie. We just saw it as the rotation is going to come in here for the team. They've they've got Stewie in connector, so they, that's why they're deciding to go for this big rotation. They can now get themselves onto that A play. Stewie can be able to be in a position to open things up as his teammates draw a lot of attention to the forward positions of Pit and Palace. And close range, we have MSL with that FAMAS. He's going to be a big part to play in this defense because his teammates might get smoked away, or maybe not. MSL ready with that FAMAS, but what damage can he do? Nothing. AZ stuck behind the smokes, unable to help his teammates who are falling one by one like a dog through dominoes. It's, it's a total mess here for the CT side. The inverse plant completely exposed for the T's. Good presence of mind while they've got the smokes down towards jungle and position as well. It's Dewey position there. And again, North are in for the save. 
Now, it was a good run from Cloud9 in the, in the sense that North were forced to or chose to give up possession of the middle area entirely and had minimal info. So when Cloud9 burst onto the site, late info for Cloud for North players deep in B and they're forced to just watch, listen to the, listen to the gunshots and take cover as Cloud9 tied a score again. Yeah, it's, it's getting really interesting between these two teams. Every time you think that one team's taking momentum, the other team uh, manages to respond, take it away, get their own string arounds. And now it's Cloud9 you know, putting North in a position where they've been reset now. And uh, of course, it's going to be really difficult for them to real really field anything for a good couple rounds to, to deal with Cloud9's T side. So we can see North are taking a tactical timeout here to try to discuss and decide how to handle this. I just noticed this on the Cloud9 camera that Automatic and Stewie basically have the same haircut, except Automatic's hairline is uh, further forward on the side of his head. So I don't know what that means for you at home. I like this continued analysis of the players. Attention to hairstyles. detail, Dan. It's about attention to detail, and that's what I have in spades. Indeed, it is 11 to 11 at present. Those are the two boys there, and you can see it's even pointing in the same direction. Wind swept hair, it's beautiful stuff. It's almost as handsome as the Observer portraits. That's true. I've, I've missed those. If those have been up on the screen, I've missed those. I definitely have, Dan. See, attention to detail. I'm, I know, right? I'm all over this. We're back in the game, though. 11 to 11 is the score. Cloud9 and North seemingly unable to separate things too much at this point. But Cloud9 have a great opportunity to do so. As we see North just spending all their money here, they have just been reset on their economy, so they have to make this work. Magis was able to, of course, save an AK-47, so there is a lot to work with here for North, but surely Cloud9 will try and anticipate an aggression here from North. These dudes are in mid like Mel Gibson and Danny Glover. Back to back, and it's gonna be successful so far. I don't know if Automatic spotted two players. Is there a fast response from Cloud9? Yes, there is. Molotov towards the sandwich position. Shroud trying to get out of Palace, but he's being sprayed through the smoke by the CT. Speaking of which, MSL doesn't feel confident to stop the bomb plant from going down, but the success is being had anyway. It's good now. Last man, one versus four. They know. Where he is, but can they kill him? Almost a headshot, but not quite. Config goes one by one. There's so many of them, but they're picking one at a time. Skidoo with a lovely fast shot. How is this happening? It's down to one on one. The odds are ridiculous. This is impossible. But Magic is coming in from the back. Skidoo seems to know, but Magic sees him in the smoke. What a ridiculous performance. But North, they went in one by one. It was like single file. Now it's your ticket to come in and get wrecked by Skidoo. Oh, that is bad. Okay, they win the rounds, but almost everyone dies and their economy was absolutely horrible so this gives cloud nine despite losing the round a really good opportunity to just absolutely crush north so what a performance there from skadoodle it's absolutely now massive there ticket number two now serving ticket number three now serving ticket number four jesus that it's is insane as well because he he also anticipated the player from behind, but through the smoke, it's just so impossibly difficult. Yeah, but let's not forget, the, he just did colossal damage yep. to the money of North. So if they can win this round now, then who knows what happens. But Config is still up to his dirty tactics. He respects nobody. And this is interesting. North have had so many small aggressions in middle, and generally they've been able to get away with them. Stewie, though, he's crept in towards Connector, and I wonder if he's gone... Yeah, he's gone unknown here by the CT side of North, and he's going to be able to get the pick onto AZ. Oh, God, he's so careful there, and he will take one straight in the face, courtesy of the one MSL. In the face. In-game leader of North doing the damage. And that's a three versus four situation for Cloud9 here. So North, you know, in a comfortable position. They've got a player on Shadow still towards A. The only thing is that they haven't seen the bomb, and there's plenty of time. Nothing. He uh, wants to give some players some haircuts, just like Fallen Cole did a few weeks ago. Three versus four. This is a huge round for Cloud9. If they can win by elimination in this round, the implications of Skudoodle's play earlier is colossal. Stereo kills for the Cloud9 side. Now they're looking for Dolby 5.1. Config, the only man left. And I don't know what uh, choice he has here. I feel like he's got to go for it while the bomb's not down. Because again, if they lose this round, 
than what Stu Doodle did in the round prior. May lose them the entire map. But there we go, a very fast 2k. The bomb's on the floor. There are 20 seconds remaining. They're forced to run Cloud9. He'll hear the footsteps of nothing, but nothing lands the headshot. They win by elimination, Cloud9. Where's your money, North? The cash has been taken away. Yeah, the money's running, was run out completely indeed, and it's, oh my god, this is so impossible to explain even how, for example, Cloud9 just, Cloud just get three kills almost like instantly across the map there to walk into the side, only to be almost shut down by config. Insane back and forth between these two teams now as North are the ones really drawing the short end of the stick. As uh, Cloud9 have also terrible economy, but they have the weapons, they just won the round, so they're going to be in a position to, if they, I mean, if nothing untoward happens, of course, they should be in a position to really just get themselves towards 14 rounds, making you know, a nice 14 to 12 sort of situation before North can buy again. Then there's a spot where if North lose that buy versus buy, Cloud9 are on 15 rounds. So you can see in that sense, Cloud9 are really in a big advantage, but we can't, we, <laughs> we can't count North out on these rounds. There's absolutely, like there's so much evidence to suggest that that North can make this a doable round. They've actually purchased a lot of smokes here, which might make things a bit awkward for Cloud9. For me, you have to go back to the damage did, the damage done by Skadoodle in that uh, that one just run, which Cloud9 lost, which really amplifies the potential of the situation that they are in at the moment. Twelve to twelve, four rounds needed. Mads is going for a very deep smoke, but it's way too deep. Unfortunately for him, he's going for a deep smoke to get into a closer position, a more dangerous position, but it won't quite work out. Config with the rifle just missing Street 2K. He may have to force a duel. He's the only person with a rifle for his team, but they need rounds, man. They need rounds at this point. And now Street, he, he has an audio cue while that Molotov is down, should they try to push through it. So he can look the other way for a while. 12 to 12, and it seems North Still looking for this retake, but they picked up an AK as well, which is soon uh, disintegrating in the hands of Config, thanks to the hands of Stewie. Because once that AK was picked up, Cajun B was running top mid. He was saving already, so maybe there was op an opportunity to save that as well. MSL's positioning himself to do so. So we'll see if they, if they take two rifles away from this. But other than that, Cloud9, they're in a great position. A great position there. Yeah, and they really need needed this round to be clean. It's as clean as you could realistically expect, only losing one player. That's great for Cloud9. And that's, uh, that's again, putting them in that very strong position. Now, North have, as you mentioned, you know, stolen away a gun. So we'll see how much that can really help North out in this situation. A couple smokes there are still on MSL and Cajun B to work with as well. But one would expect Cloud9 to run a similar round. I mean, this, the execution of this was really nice, getting the you know, two players up catwalk as they were you know, going down in towards the B apartments. Just going for that you know, classic B split, just good coordination, good team play, yeah. confident play. And now Cloud9 have that 13 to 12 scoreline. As far as the aggressions go here for North, we're going to see MSL leading with the knees, James. Never want to go down knees first. It's an interesting analogy there, but I'm going to leave that one there. AZ left on the uh, A site on his own now that his two rifles have been lost in a two rifle push. Now, you could uh, you could invest in a in a flashbang and throw it over the top of the wall. There was a uh, an NIP strat for a brief time where they would throw HE grenades over the top of the wall at people who were setting up for executes into the B bomb site. But those positions aren't even necessarily used anymore. But indeed, a flash could or could not be used, but I don't know if really they can even afford that extra money. 14 to 12, likely to be the score. Magic's and AZ moving away. AZ's collected himself an AK, and automatics on the hunt. He is, uh, he hasn't got his dogs with him, his sniffer dogs, but he's still going hunting, looking to snag himself some quarry. North have averaged $2,000 in the bank. Right now, life absolutely sucks if you are North. That's nice though. Still keeping some guns alive, doing some additional work right at the end of the rounds. And Cloud9 will just just sit there in the apartments. Don't really want to risk anything else. Skadoodle will be covering that with the AWP. And 14 to 12 is the score. And this is the point that I'm talking about here. Is North now. And, and by the way, they have indeed, of course, taken two guns from the previous round into this next one. So that, that's really important. It's going to allow them to be able to purchase uh, much more in the way of grenades. 
but this is the all important round should they lose this they will have a pretty poor buy in the following rounds and cloud nine will be on match points so this this is the round now for north they must convert this one stewie will be the lurker towards the a site it's a nice flash from automatic haven't seen that one before learn something new every day three three men around mid for the ct side but it seems if there will be presence from Cloud9, it will be late. Cloud9 have hardly thrown any grenades at this point. They have utility by the bags. While we have lack of action, just want to note that we want set off uh, smoke grenades in our office and in the fire brigade game. That is a fact. Not really too surprising the uh, the outcome of the <laughs> yeah. The cause and effect, James. So n North have rotated Cajun B towards the B bomb site now. They're trying to anticipate action from Cloud9, and it seems they might be correct, but Cloud9 have still got a minute to play with, a minute to toy with. North have done good to save their smoke grenades, so they've got three more, so they can make life difficult for these North American players. Yeah, Cloud9 in have not really put that much pressure on, have not forced them to really use those, and. Now we'll get the play in from Cloud9 as the creep comes up short from Cloud9. They've got a couple of players there in the apartments to make the push with. Shout has to get the opener here for his team, but he will be the one opened up by Config's M4. Stewie now, what can he do? It's actually Skadoodle to get the pick off there in return. Stewie through the smoke! We see this so often. Can't quite get the finish there onto Cajun B, but he's weak. 20 seconds to go now here. It's a desperate situation for the remainder of Cloud9 as they try to find these last couple kills. But can they do it in time now? Another kill from Skadoodle as Automatic has cover now to go for the plant. Skadoodle brandishing the AK-47. More dynamic with that weapon as MSL looks to try to close this one. Down and out, and there Skadoodle finds himself at the mercy of MSL. But Automatic will make it a reality for Cloud9. 15 for them and North still just stuck on that desperate 12. So close for North, really unfortunate, especially as in the 1v1, you saw the end of the gun poke out on the corner of the wall, but MSL didn't spot it. But uh, I thought Cloud9 were going to lose that, and regardless, I was going to say that was a really nice strategy from them. They put a wall of smoke into short to pull the short player away, and then they just walk up mid with three players with no grenades whatsoever. Then they leave a Skadoodle on short looking through connector with the AWP. I think it was AZ he, pick, who, he picked off, who was on the stairs and tried to rotate. That was a great strat from Cloud9, win or lose. And indeed, they did win, and now they're on match point. Nothing and Stewie moving through apartments. Skadoodle, automatic, top mid. Shroud lurking in Palace. Three in A, nobody mid thanks to the smoke from the, uh, for the CTs. Another thing is that, again, we've seen a, a few players throw a Molotov in CPL on the CT side when that smoke comes in to give them a gap to play with, but it still hasn't become uh, commonplace in these matches. This is a really nice position from Config. Misses the shot, however, but gets some info there for his team as Kyle Lund, they've got control now of Connector. AZ playing just behind that smoke in the stairs position. A scary situation. Do they know? Looks like Stewie has a good idea. There's a the second player spotted on the side. Automatic gets himself a frag as well. The push has been initiated. Cajun B though in the front lines, able to steal away an AK. Maybe there's still a chance here left alive for North, but Stewie's gonna shut that down as will Automatic and that will do it. 16 rounds for Cloud9. I mean, 12 for North, a hard fight between these two teams. It was hard, really, to see how this one was going to go. Yeah.